Hi everybody, my name is Esther Yang and I am so grateful to have the candidate, I mean not candidate now, it's going to be the district attorney, Mr. Alvin Bragg. Hi Alvin, how are you? Are you excited? Uh, well, he's, you're going to be the first, uh, first African American district attorney. I am absolutely, absolutely proud that you will be that person. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be talking to you this morning and definitely looking forward to, uh, to, to January and, and grateful to, uh, to the voters, the organizers uh, who, who, who made, made this possible. So thank you. Yeah. So I forgot to tell you, I'm sorry. Can you just bring your computer down a little bit so we can have your full... Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. That's, that's awesome. So before everybody forgets, don't forget to click like and subscribe and that's the only two things that you all the followers have to do so tell me about your I mean you graduate from Harvard you've done so many things oh my gosh and helping Eric Gard, uh, Eric Gardner's case uh, I love mrs. Carr by the way she was our one of our guests when we did black history month including a mr. Uh, mr. mr. Uh, mr. And mrs. Bell they've been they've been my friends for like almost like 10 years so I'm so grateful that you're there but tell me like what is it that makes you desire to become a lawyer first and foremost oh so I so you know I'm, I grew up in uh, Harlem Central Harlem in the 80s uh, and I had a number of interactions uh, with the justice system uh, and public safety uh, issues that that made me interested in law school so I had a gun pointed at me you know six times before I turned 21 three uh, by NYPD officers during uh, lawless stops, uh, and then three by people who weren't police officers, and, and in tandem, uh, that made me very interested in the criminal justice system, uh, in in fairness, police accountability, uh, and public safety, and so that that's why I went to law school, and that's really set the, the the framework for my focus on both, you know, as you mentioned, like civil rights work I've done, uh, but also you know uh, more traditional public safety work that I've done as well. But that's it all started when I was 15. With a, oh, my with a, gosh. A stop. I mean, you know, I mean, this is like Mr. and Mrs. Bell when they came in, including like um, Miss Hazel Dukes that came in for Black History Month. I mean, this was going on like 15 years ago, uh, what happened with what Sean Bell. And we were just like still like very disappointed. It happened with, you know, Ari Gardner. It happened with George Floyd. So I really, for me and of course my, my viewers, want to know like what is your vision I mean, you've done a lot of work, and, and also from your experience, but what is your vision for New York City? And I want us um, also to be your ally, to help you, to like support you in making New York City safer and better, of course. Yeah, no, no look, and I appreciate that. It's going to take all of us working together, you know, governing in partnership, uh, specifically on the issue of police accountability and the, what you're talking about. You, you, you know, we need, we need a number of things. We need... and. I've been advocating for a very independent and uh, a unit in the DA's office that will report directly to me. I know we now actually have a new unit that was started very recently uh, that's going to focus exclusively on police integrity issues. Uh, we had one in the Attorney General's office. Uh, we need that, that, that unit to be independent and we need to be transparent. Uh, whenever there aren't charges and in cases of, of note, we need, we need full public accounting. Uh, very important uh, for trust in our system. Uh, we need to also go beyond. I mean, the, the, the force cases are important. I've done those, the force involving death, obviously um, uh, uh, very, very important. But also, you know, we have to deal with issues like um, uh, truth telling by officers. When I was a federal prosecutor, I tried an FBI agent for, for lying. We need to be vigilant in that space. Uh, we need to be also very proactive, not just waiting for a an incident in a viral video, but we need to be looking at disciplinary records, looking at histories, uh, and tracking that uh, uh, to do investigations to root out uh, conduct before a death occurs. Uh, and then we also need some legislative changes. We need the law, the standard on use of force when police can use force, uh, deadly force. We need that to change as well. So uh, we need all that happen. I think we can really uh, have an impact from the DA's office. But it will take all of us, you know, working working together. And I should note that, you know, some of the legislative changes we've seen in the past 18 months have been a direct result of, uh, you know, people and activists taking to the streets. So it really takes all of us working together. Yeah, I always tell my followers, you know, before you do anything, the first thing you have to do is to register to vote. 
You know, I think that's really, really important. If you're not registering to vote, you have no right to complain because the way that things are going to change is that your vote matters. And then once you register to vote and you have to really understand your city, state, uh, assembly, senator, congressman, congresswoman, whatever it is, that you need to get them out of office if you feel that they're not aligned with your belief system. You know, and I think that's really important. And I think, in my opinion, of course, that's my humble opinion, that people need to get involved. That, like you said, it doesn't have to be when death occurred. You know, we have to start. And I want to make sure that my followers be your ally from the way from before even January, you know, to, to like help you. Like, what can we do? How can we do changes? Because you certainly cannot do everything all together, you know? Well, it's interesting you mentioned voting, and you know, I'm a first time candidate. And one thing that really is startling is the the low rate of voter engagement. Yeah. Uh, in terms of sort of who is voting, you know, we had about two hundred thousand people more, a little more than two hundred thousand people vote in the Democratic primary in June. Uh, you know, we need that number to be a lot higher. We need to uh, be reaching out to people, to encouraging them. I think part of this is, uh, you know, we'd be reaching out to them all the time, not just when an election's coming up, um, and, and 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 you know linking everyday issues uh, to the vote. Uh, very, very important. Yeah, and it's, like, you know, I mean, I know you did the case with Harvey Weinstein. Uh, where is that now with you? I mean, what is happening with, you know, I mean, a lot of, like, I know, like, a lot of the sexual women survivors were very upset with what's happening with Bill Cosby. And, um, and we were all upset with Harvey Weinstein, too. We felt like the previous district attorney could have done more and um and you know you being a, a great husband and 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 a father for two children where do you think that um how would you see yourself that how would you do it differently and now that it's it's you that's going to be running the show so on harvey weinstein you know there was the recording uh with harvey admitting to uh you know sexual assault uh, where can quite publicly the, the DA and the NYPD disagreed about going forward. Uh, my role in that at the Attorney General's office, we brought a lawsuit subsequent to that, suing him, his brother, and his company yeah. for having a hostile work environment. So I started that case uh, along with a great team at the Attorney General's office, and we filed it. Uh, and then um, Attorney General uh, Letitia James's team uh, you know, took over after we had a, a change of administration. Um, you mentioned Bill Cosby. I mean, that that obviously not in our state. Yeah. And 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 a really, I'm happy to go into if you want to, but like the legal reasoning there just doesn't. I mean, I I, I don't drive. know if it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't make. Yeah. Doesn't make sense, and I and I and I'm 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 hopeful that no New York courts are going to follow that kind of reasoning. Um, but very, you know, that that was a. A, a very troubling uh, uh, legal decision. And even with Epstein case, you know, the pedophile, and if you just join in, this is uh, our first African American uh, district attorney candidate, I mean, not candidate, now nominee, um, yeah, for Jeffrey Epstein. I mean... Yeah, that, that was very troubling. Uh, you know, we had, for those who don't know, you know, kind of sex offenders classification system where there are three tiers and uh, initially was going to you know going to be put into the kind of tier uh, you know for the, the 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 not commensurate with his conduct and the, and the judge intervened and um, you know put him in the in the, in the tier uh, for people who, who've you know, done the type of conduct he's done uh, and, and and you know we really and you and I were last together you know last week at a uh, bill being introduced in the city council would extend the statute of limitations. You know, we really need to be doing everything in these instances we've been talking about. Uh, you, know, you know, point to the real urgent need to you know center the voices of survivors, um, um, to focus on the trauma, and to have our systems, whether it's a, a civil court system, a criminal court system, you know, center that that trauma uh, and center the voices of survivors. And I think you know. That is the through line between you know the shortcomings in our civil system and our criminal system, 
uh, and is the answer sort of to move forward on all these issues. Yeah, Elvin, I'm, I'm so sorry. If you can just, yeah, perfect, because I want to be able to see your whole face. Um, you know, like I founded the Super Happy Healthy Kids and the AAPI for Change, and I know the my community, the Asian community, are very, very troubled with this increase of Asian violence. And how, I mean, we are trying every which way, and I actually had lunch with, uh, you know, the assembly member Harvey Epstein, talking about like, what is it that we can do in, in especially with the bail reform and I know the community is very upset about um, about just the increase of Asian violence you know uh, how would you like what would you envision for this and how how can we also support you in in resolving this matter and yeah, so the first thing we need, I think we need more resources uh, that we, I want to really increase uh, the number of people working on hate crimes I want to have more people dedicated to it. It's it's the statute is different from most criminal law statutes and requires proof of motive. Um, and, and and I want to have people with the expertise uh, in those kind of cases. I think that's that's important. I know the DA recently started a dedicated line. I think that's very important to have direct access for the community to report. Uh, and it speaks to a broader issue. We really need to to deepen the trust relationship because what we've seen is is an understandable um uh you know uh, questioning of law enforcement in this space and are they committed to to to, to working on it? i say understandable because we have so many incidents and, and 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 not a lot of charges and that leads people to to to, to question. question and so yeah. i think we need to really strengthen that um and and going through um you know establish you know community leaders like yourself um you know or organizations uh, that are working on this on the front lines uh, and, and using that as a bridge to, to, to law enforcement. And importantly, really getting the message out. I saw the NYPD spokesperson um, uh, yeah, a couple months ago now just misstating the standards, stating that uh, there needs to be proof of national origin animus uh, at the scene in order to go forward as a hate crime. And, and that's just not so. We need to change the way we're investigating and looking at these it's not that you know law enforcement shows up in the scene and that the the victim the survivor has to say everything about why and you know hand someone the case and say this is a fully established hate crime we need to be doing what we do in other other instances which is doing investigations if it smells like a hate crime seems like it might be not just saying oh well did someone say something to you if not ruling it out um going forward and doing full investigations looking at someone's email, someone's social media, looking for things that may not have happened at the scene, piecing it together. And so I think we need to bring that kind of um, investigative rigor yeah. uh, to these kind of cases. I think that, that would be very important. Yeah, and I think I also want the followers to understand that, you know, the social service has a lot of issue with this. You know, like the people are being mentally challenged uh, for the increase of the, the violence. And I, I don't want everybody to just uh, shift the issues to just, you know, that this is the NYPD or the district attorney's problem, but I think we, um, as advocate, as you are from the younger years, that we need to like make sure that people that that are in office that will be supporting the community, and I think that's really what it is. So would you? I know that you said that you will create a line, a direct line, but would you consider creating a direct line for people can just go through without this political, without this like red tape that has to go through? Is there like one they can just call? Hey, this is what's happening. So that is, you know, the the, the current district attorney announced, uh, I think probably a couple of months ago now, a dedicated hotline um, uh, for hate crimes for this purpose, and I'm certainly keep that in place. Yeah, and also like you know like. Um, I founded the AAPI for Change because I wanted um, the Super Happy Healthy Kids for the elementary kids. And the AAPI for Change is for middle school and high school. I know that when I speak to middle school and high school kids, I really tell them, hey, if you're hitting 17, consider to register to vote. And I really speak about creating that pipeline for us, right? I mean, the fact that um, this is 2021 and you'll be in office in 2022 and we have the first African-American district attorney, I just find it a little bit unacceptable. You know, it's like really a long time. Like I've worked with John, Senator John Liu and that was, he was the first city council. So I think um, I have to say like our community is also at fault for not making it happen. You know? Well, it, it's a very interesting um uh, I mean, part of it, I think, is the broader dynamic of the seat for district attorney hasn't turned over. 
Um, you know, really, we've had three district attorneys elected in the past 75 years. You look at the very same electorate, uh, the Manhattan electorate, you know, has elected a number of African American borough presidents from Percy Sutton to, you know, Constance Baker Motley, C. Virginia Fields, David Dinkins. Uh, so part of it is a function of uh, we really haven't had, uh, um, you know, contested district attorney uh, uh, races. And, that, and that's really part of a broader uh, uh, um, history throughout our country. Uh, and so, you know, I think this, this, you know, coming out of the primary where we had, you know, nine candidates, a very robust discussion. I think that's healthy for our democracy, different yeah. perspectives. Uh, and, and, and I think it's, 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 it's good. We also saw that in a lot of, you know, city council races, right? A number of candidates. So I think having people running and put forth ideas and vision um, is very helpful. And, 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 and hopefully, you know, that leads to, to more engagement uh, with, uh, you know, with and by voters. Yeah, would you create, because like, I'm, I'm always focused on the pipeline you know like younger kids would you do you have like mentoring program because that's what aapi for change like we're really focusing on like high school kids to go in into like whether it's law into like whatever it is that they want to do it just to have that civic engagement will you consider creating that pipeline for high school kids even elementary kids i know for me the super happy how the kids we actually take younger kids to um to the chambers to the to meet judges and things like that so i'm just i'm just now that i have you one-on-one -on -one, i want to make sure that you also create a pipeline that where my kids can come in to see you know the district attorney's office what it's like and maybe they want uh, they want to be part of the law professions definitely i'll give you one example you know i was i was honored to be endorsed by the, the uft teachers union and they've got the you know great mentorship program uh, that that I want the district attorney's office to be more of a part of. Yeah. With assistant district attorneys going out, talking to students, uh, you know, letting them know. I mean, that their 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 options in terms of careers in the law, including uh, you know careers in, in, in criminal justice, uh, and even more broadly, because you know some of this is not necessarily about getting them into a specific profession, but them seeing their options. And so I think it's important for for our youth, and I think it's also important for the DA's office to be out beyond the four walls of the DA's office, to be out engaging with the community we serve. Uh, so that's a, a, a big piece of what I want to do. Yeah, and also one more, one more piece, I know you are busy and I want to, um, before we end, but I also want to just make sure that I understand you. There's also an, 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 another department that, that can investigate district attorneys or you will create that? Like you said- So that we, we have, a, a, um, this is, this is an issue. I mean, there's some legislation, you know, on, on prosecutorial misconduct investigations. Um, you know, I've got a particular history of this with myself. When I was at the Attorney General's office, we actually prosecuted a sitting district attorney uh, wow. who we alleged uh, 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 engaged in misconduct. So it's something I take very seriously. Um, you know, we're going to be, you know, overseeing obviously the DAs in our office, uh, and in particular the issues that are, that really uh, are of. I think I've drawn a lot of attention is, you know, disclosure of information to the defense and yeah. um, doing that consistent with statutory and constitutional mandates um, uh, is, is really sort of at the, at the, at the, at the top of the list. But, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to have, you know, a chief you know, ethics officer. Uh, we're going to be uh, kind of very vigilant in this space. Uh, and of course we'll see, you know, what happens with legislation. I mean, right now the, the, the grievance committee of the bar is, is where um, uh, these matters would be handled for for attorney discipline, uh, and I know there's legislation. I believe I believe it may be um, Zellner Myrie's legislation on prosecutorial uh, misconduct, and I, I, I don't think they had a vote last year, and it was some litigation about it. Uh, so we'll see, uh, you know, what happens in the next session. But as for our office, you know, based on my history of you know having done this before, um, you know, we're going to be very vigilant in one training and auditing and overseeing uh you know and then if things do not go as they should you know obviously um disciplining yeah and and i'm um, you know as we end our sessions you know i really want to thank you for being here just to recap that i it's wonderful for me to hear that uh, my kids the younger one elementary middle school are 
are welcome to your office for for the mentoring part of the program and in case you're listening and you forget to vote that's one thing that I hope that all of you register to vote and I hope that all of you will become ally to the district attorney's office not just to complain 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 that we have we're in this together right to decrease the violence in Manhattan and to decrease um, to make New York City safer so we all need help to be getting there and don't forget to click and subscribe and mr. Alvin Bragg thank you so much and I am so proud that you are our first african-american district attorney well thank you thank you for having me on I really enjoyed speaking for you and I would just say as you make the um, the pitch for people to vote I would just say we got a general election in November so yeah. uh, people who voted in June come back out in November and more uh, and, and more exactly exactly people who didn't if you said oh June I wish I had gone and vote well November general election, show up to the polls. Uh, as yeah. you said, voting is key. So thank you so thank much you for having so me much. on. Always great talking with you. All right, all right, bye-bye. Bye, right. bye. Bye. Be bye. Well. Hi, everybody. I'm Esther Yang. If you'd like to see more content, if you want to watch more videos, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and then don't forget to click that bell button. Bye.